this is my new empire simulator and in this video i want to talk about why i made it what it can be used for and what you can do with it the basic idea is that power radiates out from a capital that takes the territory it can reach the easiest distance matters but also accessibility the sliders govern the costs of traversing the seven different types of terrain in the simulator. Plains, desert, water or sea, mountain, forest, river and ice. A search algorithm finds the most efficient route from the capital to each cell, taking the path that minimizes the total cost of traveling through all the cells from start to end. Imagine your General Hannibal in 218 BC trying to invade Rome from Cartagena in Spain. The natural way would be just across the sea. But you want to bring your elephants, and they are probably hard to get on a ship, which increases the costs of ocean travel. Then it might be more efficient to go by land across the Alps, like Hannibal eventually did, even though it must have been pretty hard. The heat map shows with colors how costly it is to reach all the different grid cells. Purple means relatively hard to reach, and yellow easy. When all costs are the same, a straight line is the best. But if one terrain type is cheaper, it's better to take a detour. So what can you do with this? Let me show you the different features. We can place the capital of an empire, set a name and a color for it, for instance, centered on Beijing in China. We then set the desired size of the empire, and it then takes that number of cells, starting from the cheapest to the more expensive and a coastal empire will look different from a mountain-based empire. When two empires want the same cell, it is assigned to the empire with the lowest cost of reaching the cell. Here, the two empires are evenly matched, but if we decrease river travel cost for the western empire, it will start to take river-adjacent cells from the eastern empire, which then has to expand elsewhere. I've used real-world geographical data and converted it to grid cells and uploaded a few maps of interesting regions which can be loaded easily through this menu. The world, Europe, North America, East Asia and so on. And also some more zoomed in parts with higher resolution. Let me know in the comments if you want other regions and I can upload them as well. You can also make your own maps with this simple editor. Just select the type of terrain you want and a brush size and paint it, either from scratch, or from a randomized terrain, or as an edit to an existing map. The map can then be exported into text files, which have a really simple structure. It is a grid with letters for each of the different terrain types, so you can save your map and then load it again later with the loading function. A neat function I like is that you can load guide images to help you in your painting. If I load a map of Middle Earth, I can use that as a template when making my own Lord of the Rings map. There we go. Now we can check if the path taken by the Fellowship in the books and movie really made sense. After leaving Rivendell, they head south for Mount Doom. And as you can see, it makes a lot of sense to follow the mountains south and pass through the Gap of Rowan. But then they see the Krebin from Dunland and realize that Saruman controls that part, so let's put his empire here. When his empire expands, it increases the cost of traveling through it, for obvious reasons, which changes the calculus. They have to cross the mountains and come out into the woods of Lothlorien, from which they travel by river. And it's over here by this lake that Frodo and Sam leave the fellowship, so it makes some sense. When you have placed a bunch of capitals and set their properties, like I have done for Middle Earth here, you can export them as a JSON file and then load them later. You can also export the actual territory associated with each empire. In the file, a 1 is for the first empire, a 2 for the second, and so on. The point of it all is really to see how geography shapes territory and borders. It's not a completely realistic simulation, of course, as it's only based on geography, but it can still get us pretty far. Let's take an example. One of the most famous wars in antiquity was the Peloponnesian War between the city-states of Sparta and Athens and their allies. Famously, it was the rise of Athens and the fear that this instilled in Sparta that made war inevitable, but of interest to us is that Sparta and its allies were land-based powers, while Athens maintained its empire through naval power. Let's see if we can recreate their territories just by setting different travel costs for the two empires. We first place the capitals of each empire in the right locations. Then we increase the cost of sea travel for Sparta, let's take it to the max, while decreasing it for Athens. 
Finally, we increase the size of the empires to see if the resulting territory matches with what we would expect. And I'd say it does pretty well. But this is of course a model, and as it's been said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Now let's evaluate it more scientifically. The metric I'm going to use is whether this model can predict the shapes of territory better than a simple benchmark model in which territory is assigned to the closest capital. Here are the European capitals set in the real locations, with the settings adjusted so that each grid cell will go to the closest capital. This will be our baseline model. If we now count the number of grid cells that fall into the correct country, 64% of them do in this baseline scenario. Can we get this number higher by taking terrain into account? I generated 500 random configurations of the travel cost settings and calculated the number of correct grid cells. In most cases, the results were actually worse than the baseline scenario, but in about a third of the configurations, the results were better than the baseline. This is the best version, run 331. 70% of the cells are correctly placed, and we can see that waters, deserts and mountains have almost max cost. Plains have much lower, and rivers have even lower costs. Out of the 500 randomizations, this configuration created the most realistic borders, which I think makes sense. Deserts, mountains and water are nowadays much more obstacles than transportation paths. This is the worst run, only 33% correct. Maybe because the sliders say that it's easiest to travel in mountains, apparently making Switzerland our regional power. But if each empire can have its own settings, can we do better then? It turns out, no. Out of 2000 attempts, none were better than the baseline. Most of the simulations just look like a complete mess where a few lucky countries that got low costs on planes travel take over huge parts of the map. With 58% correct, this was the best result. Not very impressive. So what have we learned? Geography and terrain matters, but also that we get pretty far in our understanding with just a simple model where territory belongs to the closest capital. But a key problem remains. I have tried to predict territory from capital location, but capital location is also determined by territory. In research, this is called reverse causality. We need to take a step further back and think about why capitals and cities are where they are. A logical next step would be to add some value to the terrain with lands rich in resources or suited for agriculture being more attractive. Play around with the simulator and let me know what you find and what you want to see added to it. And if you subscribe to the channel, you won't miss any updates. See you next time.